All right, today we're going to build a guitar body blank with the GoPro attached to my head. I'm Derek Leonard of Big D Guitars. I've been building guitars for almost 15 years, and this is the Copper Top and Ammonia Swamp Ash guitar that I've screwed in my template to. And we're going to go ahead and take this over to my bandsaw and cut out the waste. And this copper actually cuts pretty easily. This is 8mm copper from Basic Copper. You can buy nice big rolls and do lots of crazy stuff with them, which is a bunch of videos I have out there. So this is my Craftsman 10-inch bandsaw, and it's got a quarter-inch blade, and this is perfect for cutting out curves on a guitar body. I love this saw. I've been using it for quite a number of years now, and it's worked really well. We'll then take this over to my Craftsman table router with a bottom bearing bit. It's a two inch bit and this guitar body is an inch and three quarter and we will just route out all the extra wood to the template and this will give me the perfect Telecaster shaped guitar. From there we'll then take this over to my routing station and I use a DeWalt 621 router. I've got a number of these really like the way the vacuuming system works here. The chips grow up through the pillar. And the first router that I'm using here with the DeWalt has a bushing in it and a half inch bit. What I do is all of my rough routing. And so I set the depth stop to 5 eighths for the neck. I'll route out as much as I can in the neck, the humbucker, and the bridge and then the control and the copper was pretty easy to cut and route through I didn't have any issues just went really slow as I was sort of puncturing it through and then as I swap out routers I didn't find any issues with the bits or anything like that this actually worked out pretty easily so then we're gonna do our fine tuning here I've got a CMT orange three-quarter bit in my other DeWalt 621 router and I get all the depth stops set right and I'll route out any of the other waste from the other router earlier. So we'll make the adjustment for the neck and then we'll do the bridge and the neck and the control cavity and all this stuff is clamped down to my tabletop with a couple of clamps. We're going to rear route this and what I've done is I have a fastener bit and I'm going to drill out a little bit off of my template here and make my life a little bit easier, a little bit safer doing it this way versus then just taking the router and plunging it in. So same as before, I've got the thing three quarter bushing with a half inch bit and we'll just do all of the rough routing and get this leveled out and then we'll come back with the other router and do the final cleanup. So the key here is just to go slow, check the depth, make sure you don't puncture through the top with these longer bits. And just go slow and route this out. It's nice to have the multiple routers set up with the different bits. It does move this process along much quicker, a little bit less wear and tear on each bit. And then I save my knuckles. So once we route this out, get the depth right, we're going to plop on another template that I've got. So now this is for the control cavity cover. I have got a Craftsman router with a half inch top bearing bit. And this will just go through and route out so I can do my control plate. And then at this point, the body's pretty close to being done. But we're going to go ahead and get a center punch. And we're going to mark where the center is on the guitar body for the output jack. And I've got a 7 8 bit here. And we're just going to drill through with my Makita drill. Make sure there's no chunking out. And we'll then drill the control wire cavities. So I've got a long drill bit, like an electrician's drill bit here. Vacuum out all the chips. I've got a template for my neck pockets or for the neck holes, and we'll just drill those out on my drill press. So this is a 3 bit. We just go in there and drill it out. And then I wanted to clean up the sides here on my rigid oscillating sander. So this is 80 grit, I think. 
Or maybe it's 120 grit. I didn't really need that high of a grit after routing. The copper edge just needed a little bit of sanding. And so this is now 220. So I didn't need that much to take off. And I bought these 4x24 belts from Klingspore. And we'll just go through here and clean this up. And again, the copper edge wasn't really that sharp or anything. I don't have any problems. I'm not worried about cutting my fingers. Again, we're going to swap out to a different sanding sleeve for the inside of the cutout. Swap over the vacuum attachment. And we'll just clean up that little nook. Get it nice and flat and level. Fill it out one more time and we are good to go. So then for the top, I don't want to do a round over on the top. I've got a 30 degree V chamber bit, I think it's called, chamfer bit. And it's just an angle instead of a round over. And my machine was vibrating here for some reason. And just made an adjustment and it was working fine then. And again, this was cutting the copper fine. On the back side, I'm just doing a quarter inch round over. The reason I'm doing the round over on the back and the chamber on the top is because it leaves a much better finish for me to sand. The round over on the top would be sort of odd. I wouldn't be able to go down the full way. And so at least with the V-bit angled bit, I get a much smoother surface. And then as I'm sanding this here, I can actually sand this down and put a little bit of a round over on the top. So I've got all these different foam sanding blocks and I start with 220 and we're just sort of sanding out any of the lines or any of the marks from the bearing. And I haven't sealed the copper top yet. I'm going to do that next with some wipe on poly, some clear wipe on poly. That's the whitest finish. Don't want to yellow it up at all. So we'll go through and just do a bunch of sanding here. And I sort of feather the edge of the copper and make sure that there are no sort of uh, burrs or anything left. And this is with 320 then. And we'll just go over the back and the top with 320. And I think I actually spent more time sanding the guitar body than doing anything else. So then I've also got a Craftsman sander here. Just power sand the back with the 600 grit. So I usually do 220, 320, and then 600 and make sure everything's nice and smooth. And we've got one more stop in the basement here. We'll go back down here and set up the control cavity holes. So for the switches and the pots, I'm going to do a Les Paul type of switch on the top. So I need a half inch size bit. We're going to lay this out for half inch pickup toggle switch and then three ace for the pots. So we'll drop this in, drill it out. I'm sort of figured out where it was against my templates. This actually was a little bit more difficult and when I pop through the copper sort of tore a little bit. So I went through and just sort of pushed that back down and then went a little bit slower and made sure there was no tear out with my 3 ace bit. And again, this is just my Makita drill with a brad point bit. It's nice and clean. And here's where we're going to put a wipe on poly finish. And I was actually surprised at how much this darkened up. I really liked sort of the lighter view, sort of the matte view the look and once I put the wipe on poly I was really surprised at how sort of darker it got wasn't expecting that the wet look sort of changed my perspective I kind of like the matte finish so I think maybe I would do a wax finish on the top again maybe that wouldn't darken it up as much I was sort of surprised I wasn't really expecting it to be darker. It still looks pretty cool, but just a little bit darker. So I didn't film the whole process of this. I put three coats on of this wipe on poly. 
on the back and on the sides and got it all set. We'll let it dry, clamp something up here, and we'll let just dry in the shop for a couple of hours. And then I need to make a control cavity cover. And this is some pickup material that I've got. Pickup winding bobbin material. Can't remember what this sheet is called. <laughs> and we're gonna just make a control cavity cover. We'll cut this out. Put my router on the floor here. Route it to shape. So I've got a top bearing bit and this is inverted in my custom made table router. I'm gonna go ahead and sand this off. We'll get some black spray paint, spray it and then hit it with a clear and then that piece is done. So it's gonna be black and it'll match sort of the top and the hardware that I'm gonna put onto this. I will show you the completed guitar in an upcoming video. Almost done with the neck here. So thanks for watching guys. We will see you in the next video.